So when we had court the other day, my attorney, David Gordon, apparently has heard of my quote unquote crazy YouTube videos, as he puts it. Um, he speaks to everyone else about my case except me. He heard this or heard about this and his interpretation is that this was an advertisement for him. How deluded. Mr. Gordon, my name is Tammy Sanford Banks. I am trying to contact you again to find out what happened in court the other day. Um, since COVID, now there's only phone appearances. Um, I was not present when any of the attorneys or the judge spoke. If the judge was even there, I don't even know that. Um, and I was only told by the court clerk to contact you to find out what happened. Could you possibly call me back, sir? Thank you. I have continuously since then. There is no audience here tonight in this hall at the National Constitution Center. This is an contact, intimate center. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Tried to contact Mr. Gordon. And as usual with the family court ring around the rosy, you don't get a call back, you meet five minutes before court, they pretend to listen to you, and then you get into court, they've already got everything all decided, everything will got all agreed upon, and it doesn't matter what the client says. He gave me his email to shut me up because I kept calling. And I guess like Keith Weaver, I'm crazy for doing that. God forbid. And he did not read any of my emails. He was convinced that I was not putting anything up on YouTube. <clears throat> Thanked me for that, in fact. Which... Obviously, he's not paying attention. I have been. So we meet five minutes before court. I'm sitting there with my friend, and thank God she went with me as a witness. Because she has told me this whole time, stay positive. <clears throat> Things are going to work out. And she was there and got to witness firsthand me being railroaded and run over by not only social services, but now family court. Because she came into the courtroom with me. David Gordon sat there talking in circles, talking gibberish. And when I asked him to clarify, he got in my face. Literally leaned over in my face and said some fucking comment about how he's not my parole officer or something like that. Then he calls me into a private room and continues to berate me because I asked him to clarify. He did not explain to me this list of conditions that I was going to have to agree upon once we got in the courtroom as his advice to me was 
just to admit guilt. That we were homeless. I was neglecting my children. I put them in grave danger. No, actually I didn't. And when we got in that courtroom, I admitted to, yes, we were homeless, but we were in the care of social services. I made sure of that the whole time. Then the judge asked the social services lawyer, is that good enough? Is that okay if that's what she said? He doesn't even get to be a judge. Everything is controlled by social services. So he went to law school for all that time just to let social services delegate and dictate what he is now allowed to do in his courtroom. Good for him. In this courtroom, in the middle of these conditions, I interrupted and said, no, sir, I do feel like I'm being forced to do this, forced to admit this. He didn't care. They went right along with it anyway. I had no say-so over anything, no rights whatsoever, as usual. Everything that David Gordon, who was supposed to be representing me, said that he was going to do that day, request a new um, caseworker to switch out K. Van Dusen, the one that threw a box at me. He did no such thing. And when I asked other people what that process is, He's supposed to file a motion. And of course, since court, I hear nothing from him again. So no, that phone call was not an advertisement at all. But I did send him another email and I told him, in addition to this YouTube channel I'm starting, I'm going to start a advertisement agency and I'm going to name it Gossip for Profit. You pay me, I'll lie about it. 